Hi guys, it's Kelly Latavola here and I am back with another video for Neat and Tangled. Today's video is going to be kind of a comparison video. So I have some Yupo paper here and I had done another video where I used alcohol inks and a lot of people had questions about the paper I was using. Um, Yupo paper, it, the one that I have, um, that's what the pad looks like. It's solid white. There's also another one that is vellum. Um, vellum is not the one that you want. So for this comparison, we're using... Um, actual alcohol inks and the mixative and then for the other side I'm going to use um, Copic reinkers which are also alcohol based I've had several people ask me if they can use um, those to get an alcohol ink background and the answer is you can the results are just a little bit different so we're kind of going to look at what that means um, so the one on the left is going to be the actual alcohol ink from Ranger the one on the right is going to be um, the Copic uh, refills. So here you can see I put down the mixative on the paper. This is just one sheet by the way that I cut in half so I can make two cards because you know I'm all about stretching those supplies. So I picked a blue and a um, turquoise color. I think it's actually sailboat blue and I think the other one is just called turquoise. I always link everything just so you know. And then on the other one I tried to find colors that were comparative in the Copic um, markers that I owned and right out the gate you can see that um, the Copic reinkers are do spread more and they go on a little bit lighter. Um, so I'm having to add just a little bit more pigment to um, get them to be as dark as I would like. The one on the left, I have to add more pigment just really to get it moving. So even though they have about the same amount of mixative on there, the Copic reinkers are definitely more fluid. Um, but I do prefer the intensity of color um, that comes out of the actual alcohol inks. So I'm using a straw just to kind of move this around um, so that I can get a full background out of it. And I'm just going to add more mixative and more um, ink as I need it to cover up kind of both of my pieces. One of the super fun things about alcohol ink backgrounds is you can just keep playing with it until you're happy. Like there isn't a right or a wrong way. There isn't, you know, too much or too little. Um, and they also have in the regular alcohol inks, which you would not have with a Copic refill, is they have a metallic mixative that you can also purchase. I'm not sure how they would work together. Um, maybe I'll try that at some point. But here I just kind of wanted some water backgrounds. Um because I was, I'm going to be doing like summer cards. Um, I wanted to be able to move them around kind of in a different direction. So that's what I'm like, you see me trying to turn it on my craft mat. Also, when I start to turn this one on the right, you'll see that um, it kind of leaks out over the side and I get it on my craft mat. Uh, that's no big deal. It'll just wipe up with alcohol. Um, I don't know if you're, you know, working on any other surface, how easy that's going to wipe up, but I can tell you on a Ranger Craft mat, it wipes up super simple with alcohol. Um, I did notice with the um, Copic reinkers that maybe they dried a hair faster than the alcohol inks. And then um, also the texture is very, very different when they are dry. Um, so the one on the left, and I think it's because I did pick, um, you know, blues and greens, it is a little bit more granulated. Um, and there's a close up on the blog of the um, picture. And you can see uh, what the texture looks like for each one of them. Um, I think it looks super cool either way. And I think that if you want to try this and see if it's for you, um, and you already own Copic reinkers and you don't want to have to buy alcohol inks, um, this is something that's totally a viable option. Like I said, it just moves a little bit differently and you have to use more pigment to get a, an intense color. So I'm going to set those aside to dry and I'm going to do some stamping. This is the Flamingo Floaty. Um, and I believe we released this last summer and I never got to use it. I think it's so adorable, this little girl and her Flamingo Float. And um, so I'm going to stamp this down twice. I'm going to do that in intense black ink from Simon's Stamp because you know me, we're doing Copic coloring. That's what we're doing. I stamped each one of these down twice and I positioned it so that all I would have to do is turn my paper because I'm pretty lazy and I didn't want to have to clean the stamp and move it around and all that. So while one's going to be upside down from the other, it doesn't really matter because ultimately I'm going to be cutting them out. Um, 
there are dies that match this. I chose not to use them because I kind of wanted them to be really just like in their scene. So um, we're going to go right into the, the coloring. Um, you could obviously color these flamingo floaties, whatever you want, but I was looking for that hot pink. Um, when I went to, um, well, let me briefly tell you where I'm going to put the shading and then, then we'll start story time. Um, <clears throat> so underneath um, the wing, where the wing is on the body, there'd be shading underneath her leg where she's, you know, sitting on the actual float shading where the little wing portion comes together that center one is lifted up and so the other two are tucked behind in order for them to look tucked behind we're going to add shading there we're going to add shading in the area where her little tushy is because typically there's a cut out there um you know when you're when you're on a pool float there's a cut out there and so that's typically darker along the neck um, especially underneath the chin where it rounds out, there's going to be some shading there. And I also added some shading underneath the face. Um, and so that's just, I'm going to keep doing that working from my lightest color out to my darkest, darkest out to my lightest. So anywho, a couple of years ago, I went to go see my girlfriend Dawn and she lives in Florida. And, um, her, she does not have a pool, which I don't even understand because I pretty much thought everybody in Florida had a pool. Like I was very confused when I got there. I was like, what you mean you don't have a pool? Um, but I, I came to Florida. I need a pool. She was like, don't worry. My mom's got a pool. We'll go see my mom. And then um, I was basically adopted into the family and she's my second mom now. Um, but anyway, when we were there, her nieces were there and um, her niece has this like bright pink, like flamingo floaty. And so I kept thinking about her. Her, her name is Constance. And so I kept thinking about her when I was doing this coloring. And so I knew I was going to have two little girls. And so I colored one um, as a Caucasian, a little white girl. And I colored the other one as a um, a little black girl because that I was just totally had Constance on my mind. And so I'm probably going to send her um, the, the card. I hope she loves her little purple bathing suit. But anyway... While I was down there, we, we did go to the pool. I made, basically made her take me. And like, she's like, I live in Florida. Pools are not that exciting. And I was like, um, but I'm from Ohio. And I used to have a pool when I grew up. And I don't have a pool anymore. And I want to go to the pool. So she totally humored me and took me to her mama's house to hang out at the pool. While I was there, like I said, her nieces were there. And they had these, um, I don't know if you've seen them. They're mermaid tails. Okay, they're like legit mermaid tails and you put them on and you swim with them. Now, these girls are like, I don't know, seven and ten, something like that. And um, they're wearing these little mermaid tails and they're totally adorable. And I was like, I really want to be a mermaid. And so then we decided that at whatever, at the time, I think I was 30 something, um, that I was going to try to fit in this little seven-year-old's mermaid tail, <laughs> Um, which did take a little bit of shimmying and um, some creative jump. Like, you know what I'm talking about. Like when you go to put on stretchy jeans and all of a sudden you got to do a couple of lunges. Like, you know what I'm saying. You got to you gotta work it to get where it needs to be. And I did also with the mermaid tail. Um, but I did get in it. I actually posted a picture of it to my Instagram um, way back when, which I, you know what, I'll, I will try to pull that photo and uh, put it in the blog post so that you can see when I turned into a mermaid. Um, and so, but anyway, the little girls swim around in it. Oh, side note for the coloring. So I, I realized after I colored the whole thing yellow that a flamingo's nose is actually black. Hmm. <laughs> so thankfully yellow is really easy to cover up. Um, and so there I just left like a little bit of a highlight on the flamingo's nose. I'm adding the shading kind of to the left and the right of that. And um, just so that it would have appeared to have a little bit of gradation there. And ultimately I'm going to cover it up with a white gel pen. So it doesn't even matter. Probably just skip that step, honestly. Um, so anyway, the little girls are walking around, walking around. They're swimming around in these mermaid tails. And I was like, this is amazing. I totally am going to be a mermaid. I'm going to put this thing on. I shimmy my little tushy into it. And then, um, I go to swim and basically I nearly drowned. I mean, that's pretty much what happened. I have no idea how those girls were managing to swim in the mermaid tail because I could not, 
I couldn't do it. I was sinking like a stone to the bottom. I thought they were going to have to jump in and save me. Um, so it was, it was scary for a moment. It was, a, it was a perilous situation, but I managed to get to the edge of the pool and then I had to ditch the mermaid tail for fear that I was not a strong enough swimmer, honestly. Um, so yeah, that happened. I, um, oh, we're going to talk about this. So when I was coloring her, I totally forgot her face. FYI. Um, I don't worry. I'm eventually going to remember I need to go back and color her face. But so I'm adding shading to the underneath of her arms, underneath her chin, to the bottom of her leg. I'm also adding just a little triangle of shading where her knee is bent because underneath there would be a little bit darker. And then where her arm um, is kind of wrapped around the flamingo, that's going to be a little bit darker as well. Um, so again, same song and dance, uh, lightest to darkest, darkest to lightest, um, and then just really kind of filling in those areas the second time that I worked through them. So like I said, when I was younger, I had a pool. Um, my parent, well, my parents had a pool and, um, I spent so much time in the pool. Like I was just in the pool all the time. And I was, um, the first pool that we bought, we actually, somebody was selling it from their house. And so we went to their house and checked out the pool and then purchased the pool. Um, for her face, we're just going to add a little bit of shading um, where her hair is laying over her face, her bangs are laying over her face, and then also a little bit around the left and right hand side to give her a little bit of fullness. Um, so we went to these people's houses, we checked out their pool, we were like, yay, we'll take your pool. And so they took down the pool and then they brought the pool to our house and then basically my parents had like this gigantic cookout with all of my aunts and uncles and everybody just spent all day long setting up the pool. It was like a family affair, the pool setup. And so I don't really know how long that pool lasted, um, but quite some time, quite some time I spent a lot of time in the pool. I was like a little fish when I was a, a kid. One time, this is a funny story uh, of me drowning again. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why I'm always trying to just kill myself. Um, but anyway, um, so my parents were never in the pool. You know what I mean? They worked full-time jobs and, and they, they basically got the pool for me and my sisters. And so they were never in the pool. And I was next door at my neighbor's, who's basically like my fourth sister. And um, I was out hanging over there. And when I came back home, like through the backyards, my parents were in the pool. And I was like so excited that my parents were in the pool that I totally just lost my mind and jumped in the pool but I didn't know how to swim. I had needed arm floaties. I needed arm floaties. I jumped in the pool sands arm floaties and then proceeded basically to scare the living daylights out of my mother because I immediately started drowning. <laughs> like, like I hit the water and then the realization of no arm floaties to keep me at the surface hit and uh, just immediately started drowning. Um, so thankfully they were in the pool because otherwise I probably would have been in real trouble, but it, it all turned out okay. Anyway, so for this little girl's hair, um, I'm basically just doing the flicking so that there are some little strands. The darkest parts are going to be um, where that line is drawn. So basically that line is there to show you that her bangs are in the front. And then also uh, where her part is is going to be darker and the hair that's tucked behind her shoulders and her arm. For her little bathing suit, I went with the same um, colors that I did for the flamingo's beak. Um, and I'm just going to add shading along her back and then up from the top of her leg to give her this cute little yellowish orange um, bathing suit. And then we're going to, I'm going to color up the other flamingo um, like magic. And then we're going to do this little girl. So this little girl is the one who is going to be um, black. And what I wanted a warmer um, base. So that's why I went in with the E53 to just kind of fill that in first. Um, so I wanted her to, to just be a little bit warmer than the colors that I had chose. And I thought that this, because Copics are transparent and they layer really well. Um, so then from there, I'm going to start adding in my actual shading. And the shading is going to go in all of the same places, just because we're using a different um, color scheme doesn't mean that the shading is going to change whatsoever. Um, when I color, I typically color as if my right, so my right source, well, it's right now anyway, the light source is in the top right hand corner. And then, so all of my shadows are kind of down into the bottom left. Uh, that's just what works for me. If you're struggling with your light source, I had somebody send me a message on Instagram recently, um, that she was having a little bit of, of a struggle. Um, and we kind of talked through that a little. Um, but if you're, if you're struggling with that, 
pick one. So whether it's top right hand corner, top left hand corner, center, whatever it is, pick that one and always do that one. Always do that one because the more you practice it, the better you're going to get at it. And then once you get comfortable with that, you can kind of branch out um, to other types of light source, whether that's directional or, um, sorry, that was me. I, I killed a bug. Did you see that? Did you see me kill a bug? He was very, very teeny tiny. And I have no idea what business he had in my craft room, but he didn't survive. He didn't make it out. Um, but, um, so yeah, then from there, you can just kind of like spread out to other types of light sources. So here I thought maybe I was going to make this E53 my lightest color and it just looked ridiculous. So I did go over everything with it. And then I went back in with that E25, um, because it just made more sense. So I just went over everything with that E25. So the lightest part is still a quote unquote highlight, um, because it only has one layer of that color where the other ones now have two. And I'm going to color her bathing suit the same way. I'm just going to use purples to do it. So anyway, we buy this pool um, that I nearly nearly drowned in because I jumped in with no arm floaties. Um, and then my bedroom faced the back of the house. It was the only bedroom that faced the back of the house. And one morning I woke up, it was like five o'clock in the morning. I don't really know what woke me up, but like I got up out of bed and was probably like making my way to the bathroom or something. And I happened to look out the window and see that the side of our pool is just obliterated. Like it's gone, people. There's no water in the pool. Our backyard is entirely flooded. We were the last house that started the cul-de-sac. And so we flooded our backyard and our neighbor's front yard. I mean, it's just like completely surreal. Let's talk about this uh, card for one second. So I want her to have, you know, very natural curly hair. Um, and so I'm going in first with a dark violet. The reason that I chose the dark violet is because I already was coloring her bathing suit purple and so it just kind of went well. Plus I know my background's blue and I know that there's not going to be any competition there. But the reason I'm putting it in at all is because I am working with gray and black markers and I want to make sure that I do not give her gray hair. Like I don't want this cutie patootie little girl who's floating on her totally awesome flamingo float to be walking around with gray hair. Although I know that it is kind of trendy right now. Uh, well, probably not anymore. Maybe in the last year, like that silver gray look was super trendy, but I ain't trying to do that. I'm trying to give her natural hair. Um, and then so basically I'm just going to keep drawing right over the, the um, lines the illustrator created. I'm going to keep drawing right over them, just doing those little squiggles, those little curlies. I'm going to have a couple of them hanging her face. Um, and then it's, it will look more natural. I do leave some white areas you can see there, but just as a highlight. I'm going to add some detail to both of their bathing suits. I'm going to do some stripes and some polka dots. And then I'm going to outline everything with a Copic Safe uh, marker. I use EK Success journaling pens because I just like a bold black outline. So anyway, totally pools, totally demolished, front yard flooded. I have to go wake up my parents who clearly have not only invested monetarily in this pool, uh, also in their yard. Um, but like they, they're gonna, we're gonna have to clean up this mess. This, I mean, just completely. So I will never forget that. Like standing at my back bedroom window with like the bright sunrise, like just barely coming up over the horizon and me and my mom and my dad all standing there just like a, just gawking at the backyard. So um, these white highlights I'm doing to kind of make it look a little bit more shiny um, and I'm doing them in all the areas that I think the light would hit if it was coming from the top right hand corner. After that I cut them out, I fussy cut them out. In order to clean up the areas I'm using a um, water-based black marker. This is a Memento Tuxedo black marker. Uh, don't use an alcohol marker to do this. It'll bleed into your image and you'll be sad, sad, sad. Um, I did not cut out the little white piece in between their arm and the float. I have a cheat for that. Um, I just wasn't going to put myself through that struggle. Um, so doing this. Um, and then I'm going to pick the a color that matches the background. And for me, I think it was a BG45. And I'm just going to fill in that area. Nobody's ever going to know that it's not part of the background. And it is part of the actual stamped piece because the colors match so well. I'm going to heat emboss my sentiment. This is actually from the Beach Day set, um, the two different sentiments I'm using. And I'm 
treating that with an anti-static tool, stamping it in Versamark, and um, using my heat gun um, to heat it up until it's nice and smooth. Um, so anyway, after the first one was just like demolished, uh, we did buy another pool because like I said, we used it all the time. So then my parents buy a new pool. We put that one up. It lasts for however many years. And then I'm not even kidding you guys, the same thing happened. The same thing happened. Like the side of it started like rusting out. So I don't know if it was just like the slant of, um, the way that like our yard was that it put so much pressure on that side of the pool or what have you but anyway disaster transport it was it was not good my poor my poor parents so then after that the pool was out pool was gone we were grown by then though um I still wish kind of wish we had it now because then I'd take my kid over there all the time um not that I don't take my kid over there all the time because I basically survived my life with the help of um my parents just basically throwing, doing me a solid consistently at like all, every day of my life. Not like every day, like actually every day of my life. <laughs> so, uh, shout out for supportive family. So the, now that these, um, backgrounds are, um, all dry, I am going to pop them up with some foam tape. I'm going to glue my little girls down flat with some Tombow Mono Multi-Glue. Um, I don't know, I just felt like they were like surfing some waves here on their little flamingo floaties, and I love the way the backgrounds came out. The only hang-up that I had with it was because alcohol inks are so rich in color, um, it almost made my Copic coloring look flat. Isn't that crazy? Um, even though like we added all of those things in there because that color is just so naturally vibrant, it almost made the rest of it look just like it was missing a little something. So I popped up my, my little labels um, on some foam tape and then I'm just adding some sequins from our uh, clear sequin mix. And then I like to um, fill them with glossy accents after I adhere them because I feel like it makes them stay better in the mail. Not that I ever mail anything, but I'm going to try to send this ones to Constance. Honestly, I'm gonna. Um, and so then I glued all those down, filled them up with the little glossy accents, and then that's it. That's that's the whole card. So um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I hope that you'll, um, you know, maybe try this for yourself and see what works for you. And I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye.